So thanks very much to Audrey for inviting me to come along to your uh, meetup today. Um, I'm Ursula Gontier, the Membership and Support Manager in Cochrane People Services, which is part of Cochrane Central Executive. Um, and uh, as my job title indicates, I wear two hats. So I oversee the Cochrane Membership Scheme, which I'm going to be talking a little bit more about in this presentation. But it's one of the ways that we try to um, encourage um, participation in the organisation to make sure that we are inclusive and diverse and that everybody who wants to get involved with Cochrane has an opportunity to contribute. Um, and I also run the support help desk. So if you've sent a, a question to support at Cochrane.org, you might see me reply. Um, so as uh, Audrey mentioned, I'm going to be talking today about how Cochrane works as an organisation, an overview of its structure and different opportunities to get involved. Um, I'm sure there'll be time at the end for questions, but um, do feel free to put anything in the chat as you go along or just shout. <laughs> um, and um, of course, if you think of any questions afterwards, you can always contact support as well. So my plan is to um, start by talking about Cochrane membership. Um, and then look at different opportunities to connect within the organisation, get involved with Cochrane activities, then look at the organisational structure and how Cochrane fits together and talk a little bit about governance or how you could get um, involved with shaping Cochrane's future strategy um, and uh, joining different parts of the organisation that make decisions. So just to give an overview to start with, um, Cochrane is a huge global network. Um, we have people who have signed up for a Cochrane account in many countries around the world. And we're at 100,000 mark. Well, actually, we're over it now because that was at the end of um, 2020. We hit 100,000 mark for members and supporters. So those are people who are signed up to Cochrane and um, interested in our work or actively contributing. And Cochrane, obviously, as an organisation, is also a global community. So we have lots of different types of Cochrane groups. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about those different types of groups later when we come to the organisational structure. Those groups are based all over the world. Um, and hopefully, wherever you're based, you can find um, some kind of Cochrane activity going on local to you. So just to focus on Cochrane membership, um, first of all, Cochrane membership um, is a scheme that was started in 2017 when really the organisation was trying to become more inclusive and um, wanted to recognise the contribution that's made by volunteers to Cochrane's work. So they designed the Cochrane membership scheme to reward people who participate um, in Cochrane's mission. And it means that joining Cochrane starts you on a journey. So you create your Cochrane account and you become a Cochrane supporter. And then as you um, get more involved in the organisation, as you contribute, then you can earn membership points and you can be offered membership when you hit a thousand points and then you can become a Cochrane member. Um, and it's wonderful to have this opportunity to reward everyone and obviously you can choose your own level of contribution um, so if you just want to sign up for a newsletter um, screen a few uh, study records in Cochrane Crowd which I'll talk about later as well and um, that's fine if you want to try and contribute in every way possible um, and earn membership then that's wonderful as well but it, it gives everybody the opportunity not just authors who obviously get a citation when they publish a review people who are contributing in lots of different ways can now feel that they've actually um, been rewarded by the organisation and can make a contribution. So I'm just going to play a short video which we've got hosted on our Join Cochrane pages which just gives an overview of Cochrane membership um, and that will play on the next slide.
So that video is hosted on our Join Cochrane pages. You can see the URL there. Um, and those pages have been designed to really um, try to present as clearly as possible the different ways that people can get involved with the organisation. So the way that we've split up the different opportunities is um, ways to participate, ways to connect and ways to learn. Um, obviously, you can um, visit the Join Cochrane pages. I encourage you to, to take a look um, after this presentation. But I'm just going to talk through some of the different opportunities that I think might be um, most relevant to your network. Um, so first of all, you can um, connect with Cochrane, sign up to receive our newsletters, um, Cochrane Connect, which is the newsletter for external audiences, there's Cochrane Community, which is a bit more focused on internal audiences, and you can sign up for updates on um, particular aspects, so crowd, task exchange, if you're interested in patients and carers, there's a consumers newsletter, that's a great place to start to um, Keep an eye on what's going on. You can also um, join different stakeholder networks. So obviously, this network is one of those. We've also got the Cochrane Consumer Network, which anyone can join because we're always very aware that people can hold expert roles in, in Cochrane, but also be a healthcare consumer, perhaps in a different domain. And you can also join the Methods Network there um, and express your interest in some of the different methodological domains that Cochrane works in um, and sign up to receive more information on those. So those options are all available to sort of connect with different parts of the community. You can also learn. So there's a big online learning portfolio um, on the Cochrane training website, which you can access for free. And um, that's grouped by different themes and topics and different areas of um, systematic review production methods. Um, there's a recent um, addition of a knowledge translation or dissemination um, module as well, which you can see um, the screenshot of there, which can be useful if you're thinking about how to share the, the results of your review, share the evidence most effectively. Obviously, there's also Cochrane Interactive Learning, which is the suite of modules um, that give you an overview of how to conduct an intervention review. Um, if you do have a author role on a Cochrane review, then you can access these modules for free um, as part of your author training. Um, and they're also free for anyone who's signing up from a research for life A or B country. So that's a list of countries which the World Health Organization grants free access to healthcare resources for. And so if you are eligible to um, access these, then do take a look at the, the training that's offered. There's loads of different ways that you can also participate in Cochrane's work. So um, you can see a few of them on the screenshot there. Um, translating Cochrane evidence if you have another language alongside English. Um, sharing Cochrane evidence on social media. Updating Wikipedia with Cochrane references. Um, getting involved as a peer reviewer on a Cochrane review or as a consumer reviewer, um, right through to obviously becoming an author and publishing. So the way that the these opportunities are organised on the website is if you click on each arrow, you'll see a bit more detail about how to get involved. The best place to start if you're sort of just starting out in Cochrane and want to find out about some of the, the different opportunities is by signing up for Crowd and Task Exchange. So Cochrane Crowd is our citizen science initiative. Um, it's a site that's linked up to the Cochrane Register of Studies. And every day it ingests um, abstracts of uh, trials, which are screened by the crowd who reach a decision on whether the, they are um, randomized controlled trials. And then that information is used to um, screen studies for reviews it's a really great way to get involved if you've literally just got five minutes to give to Cochrane. Um, and it, there's some great um, micro modules embedded in Cochrane Crowd as well that give you some insight into Cochrane methods and different study designs as well. Cochrane Task Exchange is um, our volunteer hub. 
Um, I think of it as kind of Cochrane eBay, if you like, it's a sort of offered and wanted platform where any Cochrane group who's looking for volunteer input can post a task asking for help. Um, and um, volunteers can also sign up to join Task Exchange Network and you can showcase your areas of expertise on there. So you'll find, for instance, if a, a Cochrane group is conducting a review and they want a consumer reviewer with experience of a particular healthcare condition or a peer reviewer with clinical experience in a particular area or area in a particular um, expertise in a particular area of research methodology, they would post a task on task exchange, which would include the title of the review, a brief description of what you need to do, and you can contact the group directly via task exchange and get involved with the review production process that way. Um, and that can be a great uh, stepping stone into the review process if you're not already an author. Um, oh, thanks very much for sharing those links. Um, Audrey, by the way, and um, that's great in the chat. I saw you posted a link to interactive learning and other no problem. One of the um, other really interesting opportunities which is hosted on Task Exchange, which could be relevant, and I know that some people in this network have already taken advantage of it, is the internships which are offered as part of a programme called Cochrane International Mobility. Now, um, this was originally conceived as a sort of international exchange programme, if you like, whereby um, Cochrane groups would post internship opportunities and you could travel in person, be hosted by the group and learn from them. And some people would do that as part of their postgraduate study. Obviously, that's currently not possible in terms of a face-to-face -face interaction, but the advantage of that is that most of these opportunities have now become virtual and you can apply from wherever you are to be um, hosted, mentored, trained by the groups that are offering these opportunities. Um, I know that there are a few people in the network who've um, undertaken these internships with Cochrane Sweden, for instance. Um, they have a great program because they're hosted out of um, Lund University in Sweden. Um, there are other groups that also offer it, as you can see. So. Um, that can be a really interesting um, opportunity if you've got um, it's more time, I'd say, um, to dedicate to, to learning more about systematic reviews. And as you contribute in these different ways, so whether it's screening records on Cochrane Crowd, picking up a volunteer task on Task Exchange, undertaking an internship, then you earn points um, which contribute towards you becoming a Cochrane member. And you can track your points in your Cochrane account and um, you'll see your, your progress bar um, move across to a thousand points um, as you contribute to the organisation. Uh, and you can um, unlock membership as you reach that threshold of a thousand points. If you've done something um, independently to contribute to Cochrane, you can use the add contribution button in Cochrane account there as well to let us know what you've done um, and we can allocate points to your profile as well because we're aware that not all con uh, contributions are automatically credited with points. So um, if you are invited to become a Cochrane member then um, you'll automatically receive an email um, inviting you to accept your membership and then you can unlock um, the benefits of Cochrane membership which were um, highlighted in that brief video that I played earlier. So um, the fact that it's an, an asset that you can add to your CV, um, that it gives you representation rights within Cochrane, so it gives you voting rights um, and the right to stand for internal governance positions. And then obviously it's an opportunity for you to build skills and experience while contributing as well. So I just wanted to focus a little bit on um, the representation aspect of Cochrane membership, because that links in with what I'm going to talk about next, which is about sort of the internal governance of the organisation and how you can get involved. So if you are a Cochrane member, that means that you can stand for positions like um, the author representative on the Cochrane Council, for instance. Um, and I'm just going to show uh, the... Cochrane organogram, which um, I know the screen resolution isn't 100%. I hope you can get an overview there of 
the different um, elements of the organization. Um, so you'll see the um, governing board obviously has oversight of everything. And then the council um, and the subcommittees of the governing board um, also right up the top there. Um, and that filters down to um, at the next level, the editor in chief who has oversight of the Cochrane Library. Um, overseeing the work of the review groups and networks. And then um, in the wider community, there are um, geographic groups and other networks. So it ca can be a bit confusing um, laid out like that. So I've just briefly described the different group types on this slide here. So you've got the, um, the governing board council executives that really set the agenda for Cochrane. The council includes, as I've mentioned, an author representative. Um, it also includes a methodologist representative um, and representatives from each of the different types of groups <clears throat> who all um, provide feedback to the governing board when they're making strategic decisions. Then there are central services and support provided by the central executive team. So that's where I fit in, for instance, um, the Cochrane Help Desk is part of the central executive. Um, Revman, uh, review manager, software comes out of Cochrane Central IT services. So all of Cochrane Central resources provided by the central executive team, which is about 100 people uh, based around the world in different places. Review production, um, which is obviously Cochrane's core business that's hosted in review groups. So there are 53 review groups which are um, have their own special topic specialism. So it could be kidney and transplant, heart, um, wounds, 53 different um, areas of expertise. They are then grouped thematically into eight review group networks. Um, so um, for instance, the Children and Families Network groups, review groups such as Cochrane Neonatal and Cochrane um, Fertility Regulation, for example. So the networks give a sort of more thematic overview of the review topic areas. Then the, the methods groups, um, which again are sort of topic based. So there's a methods group for statistics or bias or um, non-randomized studies. Um, they kind of allow Cochrane methods to keep pace with um, other developments in methodology and they inform the methods that are used in Cochrane reviews. The Cochrane fields, it's a bit of an odd name for that group type, but they're actually sort of, um, again, thematic areas of healthcare, but where they disseminate evidence produced by Cochrane groups. So um, it's really a mechanism to make sure that Cochrane evidence is getting into the hands of clinicians. So, for example, there's a field for Cochrane nursing, which would pull together um, review findings produced by, um, for instance, Cochrane wounds with Cochrane emergency care, for example, and repackage those for use um, by nurses. So um, the fields are kind of a, a a vector to allow the evidence to travel from the, the review groups out into people who are actually working in healthcare practice on the ground. Um, and then there's stakeholder representation, so the consumer network, which makes sure that patients and the public have a voice in um, all different parts of Cochrane. So um, I should have said actually that there's a consumer executive, there's obviously a consumer representative um, on the council as well. So trying to make sure that and their voices are heard throughout uh, Cochrane. In terms of the elements of the organisation where I think it would be most useful, potentially most um, interesting for people in this group to get involved, you could think about um, joining the Cochrane Author Panel. Now, the Cochrane Author Panel is just a purely voluntary, um, you know, complete a short web form to sign up body. And it's just a group of authors who are... Um, actively working on Cochrane reviews and are happy for the Cochrane Council author representatives to contact you at any time to just ask your opinion on author issues, if you like. So if you're interested in, in joining that, then do search for the Cochrane author panel. As I said, there's a short web form to complete on the Cochrane community website 
um, to join that. Um, and then the Cochrane Council author representatives reach out to the panel if they've got anything to discuss. You can also stand, if you're a Cochrane member, you can stand for the Cochrane Council as an author rep or a methodologist rep, and that really gives you a seat at the strategic table. And you can also um, get involved with your local geographic group. Um, so wherever you're based in the world, you can find your local geographic group searching on the, the main Cochrane website. There's a, a menu where you can, um, you, where you can either use the pins on the map or select your country, find groups that are hosted there. Each group would normally have its own website, um, generally in English and local language as well. And they often have their own newsletter. So you can sign up, subscribe to get news and updates. And they have opportunities to get involved with local training events, local workshops, um, the lucky uh, groups in Australia and New Zealand running face-to-face -face training, obviously, <laughs> no one else is. Um, but there's lots going on in different parts of the world, which um, it can be interesting to find out about via the geographic groups as well. So everything that I've just been talking about, um, you can find out more information on the, the main Cochrane website, so Cochrane.org, the organisation um, and other information about governance is under About Us and the information about um, membership, different ways to get involved, different opportunities are um, listed under Join Cochrane. Um, and hopefully you can, you can find everything you need um, on there. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. So please ask any questions or as I said, if something occurs to you later, please feel free to email support but it'd be lovely to hear if you've got any questions now.